they, 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 they let that happen. So it, and you'll, you'll get into it for the example of this thing, but so if it had $5 million in assessed value, mm -hmm. and, and then, because they still get the same property tax bill as, as they were before. Okay. So, so now if it goes up to $10 million, it, the base was $5 million. And say there's only one business in it, or it's a tip. And that tip, the, the, that area had $5 million of all land, and they put a $5 million building on it, and uh, so then it rose to $10 million. Property tax bill would be the same top property tax bill as the business next to them. Mm -hmm. The same tax rates, just like it, but half the money, $5 million, would go to the taxing body. The other half would go to the tip. Okay. So Cook County actually has to know it's a big computer system knowing that this one here, you know, it has a base EAV of this, and so that, that money still goes to the school district, and any increments go into a separate tip fund that the municipality controls. So basically, in the 23 years, we're collecting. Right. But the, the idea for the qualifying factors is that this is a blight area, it's not developing. And so they have to do something to, that's the theory, to incentivize people to develop. So if, if it didn't develop, then that EAB base, that assessed valuation base, might stay at that $5 million. But if the declarative and if the city started doing some things to make development attractive, the property value goes up. But as the property goes values goes up during those 23 years, the taxes on the incremental value go to the village tip fine. Okay, so the, the school district is losing money, it's just not acquiring the increase. Because okay. it's going into the TIF fund, which is being used to develop and go to the projects of the TIF fund. That's what they call the incremental. So that's where the incremental comes in. Incremental to the EAP, increase EAP. Okay, thank you for that. So TIFs can be extended for a maximum of 12 years, which could bring the potential life of your TIF to a total of 35 years. You have your original 23 years, you can extend up to 12, so you have the potential of having a TIF on the books for 35 years, basically. However, in order for a TIF to be extended, all of the taxing bodies in the TIF must approve it. This is in contrast to the creation of a TIF, because when you're creating a TIF, the municipality has sole authority. We don't get to say, we don't have to vote to approve it. The city says, has the sole authority of that. Now, if the TIF is not extended, when it expires, that incremental EAB that we were just talking about is added as new construction to our district's tax levy calculation, which would produce an additional revenue above the tax rate. And that new property is not um, Right. Right. It's, it's not added as new construction. Right. So it adds your base. Mm -hmm. so but you're not, you're not stuck with, oh, well, it's more than 2% percent No. Yeah. So it's, 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 it truly is additional revenue. Right. Right. So the first one we're going to talk about is closing tip number one, which is. Oh, sure. Sorry. We're going to first talk about Country Club Hills. So District 228 is 100% of the Country Club Hills tip. There are no other, we, we would be the sole um, high school district in Country Club Hills. This is just a map of where it says a purple outline. With the Country Club Hills TIF, it was created in 2008. They're asking for revenue from 23 years to 35 years. It has not expired. What they're going to do is ask for the additional 12 years to be added on right now. There is no incremental EAB to date which means that there's no TIF fund incremental taxes to date either. So you'll see the difference between Country Club Hills versus Posen when we, when we explain that. So there's no money in the TIF pot, so to speak. Is that correct? Yes. I think that, well, it's been in existence for 10 years, and I think at one time they got $75. So, but basically, you remember what happened in 2008 was the year that right, the, right. the market and the yeah, real estate exactly. market. So it's what we call underwater. You know, even even if there's not development, we usually think land values would go up and there'd be a little bit increase. 
in this case, you know, it's largely vacant, but the property values have dropped so much that the, that the, uh, that the current value is less than the base from 2008. So country code health tip is a little bit different than Posen. Here's the map of the Posen tip. Number one, it's Sibley Boulevard. It's the um, area highlighted in purple and, and yellow. And then the next map shows which area would consist of District 228. And we're estimating that District 228 allocates 80% of the Posen tip number one. You might want to just like draw where that division street is and show, show like comparison to two other. Yeah, I'll, I'll just <laughs> so I mean, it, you know, this is the district boundary on this side here, and it ends at Division Street, which is right. Wait, this is Division Street here. Is it? No, one of the streets right here. I can't, I can't see it. No, this is like Division. So just go boom here. So this is uh, District Two Hundred Five, I think Thornton, uh, on that on that side over here but the rest is is district 228 so you can't see that just a small sliver i think just basically this is of that purple that's not not in, in district 228. but there's other chance in that correct right we're not going to so we're saying 80 percent of this tip would be in district 228. so here are some uh facts and numbers just that we think are important to know First and foremost, this TIF is set to expire next year, so December 2019. When the TIF was created in 1995, our base EAV was 11.3 million, and then in 2016, our EAV grew 5.5 million, bringing us to 16.9 million in 2016. So as I mentioned, there's that incremental EAV, 5.5 million. In 2016, the TIF fund incremental taxes were $871,000. As I mentioned, we believe that District 228 is about 80% of this TIF. So 80% of $871,000 is $697,000. We are not the only taxing body in this TIF, so we would say of that 80%, we would believe that we are 37% of the tax bill. So what we did was we took $697,000, times it by 37%, which we believe would be allocated to District 228, and came up with $258,000. Now, if this TIF were to be extended 12 years, what you would do is take the $258,000 that we've come up with being our cut, basically, and times it by 12 years, which would be the life of the TIF extension, and that brings us to $3 million District 228 revenue that would instead be allocated towards the TIF. Of new monies, not right. take, take away. And this is, again, assuming that there's no change in the increment or that um, District 228's proportion of the TIF is going to change. So that's. Where do we get um, the 871000 so. so 871000 is the money that was generated from the TIF in 2016. We pulled that number from the contract site. Okay. So I, I follow all the bullets, but the, the, the incremental EAV by five million the difference. But eight hundred and seventy one has nothing to do with that five million? Well eight hundred and seventy one thousand is is going to be what the TIF fund brought in in two thousand sixteen. So that was and you kind of could compute it by the average tax rate on EAV is about fourteen percent, I think, maybe closer to fifteen percent. You know, the, 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 the tax rate. So you think about 15% of 5.5, that generates uh, about 871. But it's a combination of, of everybody's, every tax bill in the EAB and what portion of that went into it. So Cook County has a robust record of every tip in Cook County and what amount of money went into that tip. And so it actually has every year how much money went into the tip since its inception on Cook County's website. So it's it's a good number, it's a solid number. So Cook County said that they, because Cook County is the one that distributes the taxes, and so they said 871,000 went into that tip, and that's basically, you know, various tax rates off of that incremental EAB. Okay. Yeah. 
but I think, yeah, 10% would be uh, 552,000, and you could another, another 5% of that. It's about it. The, the average tax bill, I think, it is about 14 or 15% of, of the assessed value. So if you take that, that comes out to the 871. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Any other questions on the presentation? That concludes my presentation. So we have two um, towns asking for an extension. Um, I've invited them both to come and present <coughs> their story to us. Um, uh, and we can put this on our uh, agenda for the January meeting after so typically I would make a recommendation based on uh, research and present that to you this is what I didn't feel quite as comfortable presenting to you with my recommendation because it does impact taxpayer dollars so I've invited both the cities to come and put their case on and we'll leave it up to you guys to, to make the appropriate and fair decision so with that, I'd like to invite Country Club Bills and Air Force and the staff to come forward. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you uh, to the family and board members for giving me this opportunity to stand before you today. First of all, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, as you know, the city of Country Club Bills, we have a 23-year TIF. We're into about 10 years of that TIF at this point in time. Uh, we had a lot of momentum going in 2008 when the market crashed and uh, we had uh, a couple of developers who wanted to bring an outlet model to the area and because of the crash, uh, the finances didn't work out and everything kind of fell apart. So today, we have another in investor uh, that wants to come in and just recently there was an article in the Tribune, maybe in December, oh, we have a copy here. Uh, that tells a pretty good story about uh, that particular area. The area that we're speaking about is on 167th Street, uh, right between Pulaski and uh, I-57 and Cicero. In that area, you might have seen it. We have signs out there saying Outlet Mall, Chicago Outlet Mall, big signs coming, uh, which is a million and a half dollar sign out there. So we have to figure out some way to pay for that. But basically, um, oh yeah, here we go right here. Thank you, sir. Uh, which area is it? The whole area? Or? The whole area. Oh, the whole area. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, basically um, uh, it's just the area up there. Yeah, we're, we're looking for a hotel, water slide, and all that other good stuff that we have planned. Uh, but the developers that we're speaking to now. Uh, we just need a little longer run on the tip because we only have 12 years left. And by the time we get something developed, uh, we're going to probably be like another two or three years or four years or so. That tip will be coming pretty close to expire. So we're here tonight to ask for an extension. And I have with me tonight my economic development chair person, Mr. Mike Cooter, who's going to speak to you and give you some information about what we're trying to do there in the city of Country Club Hills. Mayor Ford spoke really well about the, the, uh, the area there, but it's basically uh, Cicero, 167th Street. It's a couple hundred acres of land, and it's all vacant. And the bottom line is the TIF is a uh, marketing tactic by the city to try to get in, uh, a developer to develop some profits in the country. The taxes of Country Club Hills are very high. But if we can uh, develop that area with uh, some larger anchor, it would dramatically drop property taxes for our residents. And um, with that area, the way it is, and as big as it is, in fact, it's undeveloped, the only way we'll ever get it developed is if we offer some sort of um, uh, incentive as far as developing the infrastructure, you know, uh, dealing with the roads, dealing with, uh, you know, water and sewer. So basically what would happen is by capturing it as a TIF and uh, putting that TIF money into the project itself, the, uh, the TIF monies would pay for basically the roads and the infrastructure to then entice a, uh, um, a builder to go in and do the property. They could benefit from it in, in some degree because of the, uh, the, the tax uh, relief uh, that the TIF could then provide because we might 
you know, throw in some other, um, you know, uh, or could uh, make it so their build is better. But, but the bottom line is, if we don't have a tip there, it will stay vacant land. It's not even being developed as farmland. There's nothing going on there. And, and of course, in 2007, we were coming close to getting the outlet mall. You know, we had the, um, the whole uh, uh, 10th uh, casino license going on, and they were hoping to maybe develop a you know, hotel there and whatnot. So they went ahead and gambled and, and put the tip there to, to try to get uh, people in. And nothing happened, so you know we are now ten years later of nothing happening on the tip, and we're asking for an extension because the uh, um, right now the, the, there's a seller and a buyer involved, and then they also have a developer involved, and they're basically saying since we only have about uh, 12 years left on the tip, the likelihood of getting it fully developed in time um, isn't likely uh, without having more time to recoup the money. So they want more time on the tip. So they can get the project started and fully developed, and then uh, us have enough tip dollars to then, you know, uh, pay for all the infrastructure. For that. So, so the bottom line is two things: that it's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's an enticing, um, you know, uh, marketing methodology by the city. And if we don't do this, nothing's going to happen to that property, especially Cook County. Because keep in mind too, um, along with Posen, both of us, uh, we're dealing with Indiana. We're dealing with Wolf County. Um, uh, we, we have to have a competitive edge, and TIF offers the competitive edge for us. So. Oh, and then uh, I, the, the, uh, the handouts. The first one of the article um, they wrote, basically explaining what um, the developer is, is interested in doing. Um, they, they have a little design of what they're proposing. They're still thinking commercial along with the warehousing. This is a very dramatic warehousing. Up there, but uh, you know, they're, they're kind of just uh, laying it out. I, I had a, a tip primer just like that you had the, uh, the, the presentation, so that could help you. And uh, the last one here. Oh, just showing the fact that we have gotten no tip revenue from the, the property whatsoever. It's just stayed, um, you know, uh, zero. So one year was $75. So that's where we're at with, uh, with our property. So, so yeah, I guess that's a question to the board would be put at a, at a formal board meeting. When would you want an answer by critical that we need this in the next month? Well, so we have, like, we have a developer that's kind of on the field. He's waiting. The sooner the better. The sooner the better. Uh, if you can get it to us uh, this month or next month, we'll be okay with it. Uh, we just want to make sure that we have something to offer. And, and, and the risk of extending the tip for this one is really minimal to none because there is nothing going on right now. So we're not putting anything in jeopardy. This developer has plans for the whole area, or is it? No, uh, he, he starts uh, then hopefully up to 50 acres. Actually, uh, that land uh, is formerly owned by the Catholic family. Right. If you're familiar with them. Yeah. And somehow, um, and well, we got away from them, and we got two developers uh, that's uh, in the picture now. And uh, the second developer <coughs> is Mr. Mr. Dow. He owns uh, about 200 acres of that that partial land here. How, how big did you say it was? The whole. I think it's about 300 and some acres. Yeah, I got to calculate it. It's it's in the office for sure. It's, it's, it's 200 and some 150. Yeah, something like that. But the one owner for the Outback Mall, that portion it was like 125. And he's willing to sell that. And so the, the, the remaining balance of that is owned by another developer. Uh, and he's uh, he's from Chicago and he's interested in still renting a hotel into that area. And um, we really hope to get the uh, casino at some point in time because uh, the uh, canary. Uh, the guy from the East Coast, he's still willing and, and waiting to uh, build a casino there. So whenever the, the state of Illinois, the governor decides to sign the bill, then we'll be able to move forward on that as well. But we're not putting that in the basket right now. We're kind of pushing that out because it's been out there for a long time with no, no results. So we're looking at this one developer who really, really is interested in moving forward at this time. Well, we have to think when something starts other people 
Right. Yes, if you build it, they will come. Yes. <laughs> Keep in mind, none of this is uh, zone residential at all. So right. Right. they will make no future impact on the school schools. There won't be right. any students added or anything. This is all commercial, industrial, entertainment, trying to, to pull uh, acres that way. How do the developers Well, right now they don't have it. Um, you know, they're 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 not going to break ground this year or probably next year. So, see, yeah, once the tip is approved, it's still going to take a while because we got to go to get another taxing uh, 144 as a school uh, uh, district that's in there, and we talking to them as well. And I think the attorney down there represent them as well. No, I don't represent 144. You know, 161. 160. <laughs> See, and we have to do more work, so. Mm -hmm. I, but if you guys, the timing, the mayor, uh, excuse me for yes. interrupting. Just um, because the extension has to be done by the legislature, yes. we're all, they're also subject to the legislature's yes. cycle. Okay, so if they don't get the approvals from you guys, from the school districts, pretty okay. soon, it'll push it back a whole other year. Yeah. So you guys will be, like, you know, one of the first to say yay or nay to us. Then we spent some, another whole process that we got to go to. So it's not an easy task that we have to you know, go through. And this is involving a buyer and seller and investor situation yeah. where they want to do the transfers and be comfortable to know that if we have another economic downturn or something like that, they can sit on the property because that's part of the, uh, the, the need to, to really get going now. Um, is they want to feel like the tip is being reset to its original. Year. Since 10 years have passed and you added 12, you know, it, it kind of basically you know, brings back to the original tip with you know, that uh, was the time in 2000. What's the plan for the dollars? Uh, for the developers that need to get? How, how much will it already? It's not, it's all vacant. I mean, I see, I see a big parcel of land. We're, we're we're imagining the majority of the funds will, will have to be used for roads, infrastructures, just to get it into being part of our city, just to make the developer in. Um, yeah. Now, what happens when, it's like Walmart, they got these abatements and stuff like that? Where, how does that turn out? It doesn't. Then they'll come back and ask us for an abatement too. Well, I, I can't speak for Walmart, you know. Uh, no, I'm talking about people that's coming. Yeah, well, they ask for additional, well, no way to know, you know, until they come to us. But it's possible. Yeah, we don't know. The difference with an abatement mark is you get half taxes. You're not frozen at a level. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing I'd say. Whatever that incremental is, you're getting half of it. So okay. You're, and, you're growing, at least. And, and you get to make a decision on abatement. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, the tip is the, the village does the, or the city does the tip. Right. They need our permission if they want to extend it. But on the abatements, every district gets to make the decision for itself. That is true. So you can decline that. You can request for another tip you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I just well that property or the other the property to the right there. So that's not it's not included. Right. Yes. And that yeah. was an abatement. Right. Yes. Ninety-nine. Oh, so I, think <laughs> I think they're. <laughs> but no, sir. I think it is. It's expired. Yeah, it's expired. It's expired. Walmart it's expired. And, the, and the theater, and they've stayed. Uh, and, and as you know, we built, uh, not built, we uh, bought in Marcus over there, mm -hmm. uh, and that really improved the area. That's where it started. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So, yeah. But I'll, I'll um, with Walmart and said that expired, so we're not giving them any at this point in time. Uh, just one last thing about this strip of land here. Um, it's an enterprise zone. I don't know how to make you out well with that. Uh, being an enterprise zone, but that is going to be one of the other incentives to that might draw the developers to come in. As well, and that's one of the incentives that the county is. Uh, yeah, they get the uh, sales tax and sales tax and sales tax. Um, they get yeah. other, yeah. other types of discounts and structure yeah. here. Thanks, you know. Yeah. So, None of that takes away from No, no, no. no. I just wanted to put that out there as an incentive. Any other questions? We, any 
I just found a, a acreage, on a square mile, it's 640 acres to a square mile. And that looks like it, it, probably half a square mile. Almost, yeah. I would say probably half a square yeah. mile. Yeah. Uh, so it's like 320 or if not. Right? Yes. And this, this chart that we're showing us here, this is just what was in the tip on. It's not, I mean, I don't know what our tax base was. And it's, but it just shows. But it's just showing that's what the difference is. Seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five dollars is all. There is no way to do no activity. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. If, if the board were interested in asking for some concessions with regard to this, things like if you create another tip, you wouldn't transfer the surplus from this tip into another tip, for instance. I know you don't have another tip right now, but certain other things like that, that that if this board were interested in that, would that be negotiable as far as the city? We would be willing to sit down and, and discuss that with you, uh, you know, if that be the case. Uh, the time is up, yes. Your time, yeah. Yeah, we, we would have no problem doing that with you. That's one of the uh, concessions that we want to offer. That's the open for discussion, yes. So the biggest thing for us is it doesn't cost that much. It's just a money. Right. Right. That's the easy one for us. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, board members. Appreciate it. Next, some representatives from the, the village of Posen. Mayor Pavilion Act. A little bit different. A little bit different. It would be, yes, it would be two separate votes. Good evening, everybody. I'm Frank Pavilion Act from the American Proposals. I appreciate that you can your time in the entire district to 28 board members. Our uh, situation is much different in Country Club Hills. Ours is a life safety, health safety issue. We need to do an infrastructure with a water tower to increase pressure on the north end of our business, our north end of town, for residential and our industrial area. Um, so that being said, I'm going to ask Bob sure. Rizlicki from Canada and Canada to explain some things to you about what we want to do. I'm fairly new at this because we just got into office on May 9th, but I'm versed on this particular TIF one. And Bob will take over. Thank you. Can we go to that one slide that you guys had with the uh, dollar sign? Sure. Thanks. Um, you know, as Steve has pointed out, you know, there is a deferment on, on what the district would get, you know, if this is extended. And, and um, you know, we, we're within the neighborhood that, you know, 258000 per year, that's really what you're foregoing, and that's what the village would continue for funding largely uh, public improvements. Um, you know, the, the public improvements, I think, we've given the district, uh, you know, they are mapped out. Uh, Robinson Engineering has put together a pretty detailed review of both the water and the sewer. Um, and, and we had the, and the village has started on some of that. I mean, the two or three big issues as we see it, and it's been pointed out to us uh, over the years, has been the um, pressure and capacity on the north side of town. And what that really means is you're going to need uh, another water tower over there. Uh, secondly, there has to be redundancy with respect to um, facilities that are south of 147th. Right now, there's only one line. You know, part of what we're doing right now is extending uh, a, another line. Easements were uh, obtained, and, and then thirdly, uh, we'll be piping throughout most of the industrial and commercial area uh, that uh, is it, that is in the tip, and also uh, the you know largest part of the town, uh, the industrial and commercial basis is, is in uh, you know, the tip. You know, what we tried to do as we came to their initial meeting, uh, you know, two things that were suggested to us. One is uh, a declaration of surplus. And I think we, we were talking originally about 20%. I think you had indicated you'd like to see that bumped up. So as a result, um, out of that 258, maybe about 60,000, between 55 and 60,000 would be returned to you and there'd be a lower amount going to the, the village. The other thing uh, we heard you was um, doing increases 
an annual increase in that sharing percentage based upon if we get grants or we get other sources of funding other than PIF to fund those improvements and they'll be detailed in a uh, intergovernmental agreement we could identify that for the uh, for the district but to the extent that there's a direct drop and I think one example would be you know if there was an 11 percent uh, drop because we've got grants we would increase that funding percentage up by 11 percent to 33 percent and that would be done on an annual basis there'd be a recalibration uh, you know we would disclose that we did No, uh, no, we fixed the number. We, we fixed the number, and, and, and the idea would be if it goes down, that you would have relief uh, on the uh, on the sharing percentage. So, fix the number. I mean, it's our best guess. Of course, you know, engineers are involved, so we got contingencies in there and everything. But the idea would be to fix the number that that uh, identifies those capital needs to the extent the village is able to get funding through grants. IEPA loans, or to the extent that they could even fund, you know, part of one of the things we had thought about is, you know, to the extent they could fund it themselves uh, through the GO, it'd be another source of funding other than TIF. And as a result, you'd have a recalibration and increase the sharing percentage. And that would be reported, you know, we do that annually. So th those were two uh, suggestions I thought we heard from that initial meeting, set about a month, about a month ago. So that would be a modification, you know, in, uh, we, like I said, they declare surplus on about on 22 percent, and that's for everybody, all the districts, the, the township, the grade school, everybody gets their piece. Yours is uh, between 55 or 60 thousand dollars, depending on you know the tax rates or the amounts collected. But that would float if the amount goes up, then you know the 22 percent, 22 and a half percent is based on whatever comes in. Have any other taxing bodies? Made an official vote on this? Or yes, we yeah. have 11 of 14 that have accepted. 11 of 14. Three that were working at the end now is District 228, 143 and a half, and 147. I've been to a board meeting at 147. I've been in contact with Fort Olson, who represents 143 and a half. I've sent him the same intergovernmental agreement that I have for your district here that I think Dr. Kendall had given to you already at 22 and a half percent. I don't know if the rest of the board was able to look at that, but um, I have extra copies here. What happens if you don't get this inspection? Well, are you, are there the, the life safety the health need? issues are this, Mrs. Kirk. We have industrial in our in our community in this tip that right now have sprinkler systems that can't function without that water. So that's the life and health issue. District 143 and a half schools are right there by that, that area where we have low pressure on the north end of town. And remember, Polson's only 1.1 square mile. It's a small town, 5,928 residents. We don't have much development. Um, we're, we're working on that. Get me wrong, we're, we're, we're out there, we're knocking on doors and talking to people, and I hope in the very near future that's going to help us. This is a life crisis, health crisis issue right now, and we need to get this water development, and we need this funding to help us with that on the north end of town. Right now, yes, ma'am. If, if you weren't allocated the extension, what other means would you be able to use besides? Well, that we have any other means. Yeah, in the near term, term sources of yeah, in the near term, we've asked Robinson to look at the ability for either IEPA loans or any other grants that might be available, that's still an open book. Um, we are crunched for credit, I, I'll be honest with you. As it relates to the, the, the village's general fund, one of the issues we've come up with is the ability to access the market. And um, it's a work in progress. It's going to take several years to get to your question. Uh, we, we can't do it right away. The general fund has to be stabilized, has to be improved, and that's a three to five year program. We're not there yet. And, and by that, in that interim period, uh, we're hard pressed to try to figure out how to fund this. But I, I have to think your, you, the potential for any businesses in that industrial area under these situations to leave. Uh, we we had to we had to that's a very good observation because for the for Aaron Rope in yes. order 
that they're going undergoing their third expansion. Uh, in order to provide pressure, we had to put booster pumps in which the which the TIF fund had to pay for uh, in order to uh, allow them to pass code and to get into in play. Five thousand dollars, and plus we have a fire and we use that booster system. We think it'll break the main all the way to the water tower. Yeah, it's that's on the other side of by 147th Street, just south of 147th Street. And it's all on a piece by piece basis. Those guys, there's a few other fiber drum. Uh, it's the same kind of thing that has to be addressed in, in, when they have their testing in order to meet the pressure numbers that you had to put in, in boosters. You can't overtime you. There has to be a less piecemeal. One thing the Robinson guys have pointed out, uh, it's been piecemeal probably for the last 10 years. Yes. And uh, yeah, my water rate breaks breaks in three days now. Yeah, the, the, they started, we started slow just by looking at the valves and doing a, a, a sewer and flow stuff. That was done in uh, 2017. And uh, whatever could be done on, on, on the, let's say, the, the, the less comprehensive basis was tried first in terms of cleaning all the valves, replacing them. Uh, when we looked at the flow numbers, it, it, there's just not enough pressure. That tank, there has to be another tank on it. Does that affect um, the insurance rates? Well, it certainly does for the industrial. Yeah. I mean, it's just that's, saying yes. And, and that's how we actually found out about the problem about a year ago is when they had their uh, inspectors come in. They said, well, wait a minute. You, you, you've got this system set up, the sprinkler system. There's not enough pressure from the feed down the street in order to I mean, power this thing. Fire, uh, for as well. Fire department rating is still exceptional because our, our department there, you're an ALS in the firefighting experience. But we do have another time that we had to connect to Blue Island on the other side for fire items we have that, but for the immediate use of the sprinkler system, that would just bust our lines all the way out. And this is something that's new to me. This, this was handed over to us, it wasn't addressed, but it's something we need to fix. It's our responsibility as a village to fix this, and we have to fix this. So I've talked to- Water wasn't part of the TIF plan? It was, but other things were addressed. And I think I mentioned it before, unfortunately, it seemed like more visible projects, streets, alleys, sidewalks. It is what it is. There's one problem, I highly welcome. Uh -huh. I'm currently paying every month for our new water. So I'm having a hard time explaining to my residents that I'm giving away $3 million while we're each paying 20 bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. So there's other, I mean, obviously there's other ways. Yeah, there, there's other ways, but as it relates to the, you know, the economics, that it's, we look at it, it, it it's just not, it's, it's not feasible right now. Is that we're trying to put a, a, a safety valve in there as it relates to as other sources are identified or there's a way to efficiently access the market and price it. We have that reduction and, and increase the, the sharing percentage, but uh, uh, right now that, that seems to be that seems to be the best way to try to address it. On, on behalf of us getting representation from the state, because you know this SB bill has to get presented in the spring session because this this TIF expires in December of 2018. I've had the opportunity to meet with representative, state representative Will Davis and Senator Harris. And we have their full support. To they're not losing anything, though. That's no, the, I mean, it's easy for them to approve. Sure. Because it's just something that's loose and I want to bring to your attention yeah. that not only do we have 11 of the 14 taxable bodies that have accepted this to vote, but that we've talked to our representatives and the state senator that we needed to to help us move this along, hopefully in, in a quick process. Well, if they're not able to support their industrial area, we want to see that. Places decide to start leaving. If they start to, yeah. In fact, that's why Aaron Rope is threatening right. to leave to go to Indiana. Go to Indiana. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, we need to do something with the water source there. Will he? I don't know. But He's threatening, and I don't know that he will or not, but it's a big corporation. It's a $25 million corporation. We would definitely lose Mr. Door. And three expansions. So, so did you did you talk with him saying, hey, so we have these improvements made that 
I've talked to him, and, and he's he's at a I guess he's waiting to see. comfortable to see what happens. If that's a true word, comfortable. Or not. So he's, he's the kind of guy where he has a big company and he would pack up and go. And he's saying he's expanding because y'all are kind of landlocked, right? Is, yes. is that area landlocked? Well, we still have expansion north. North, north okay. of that right. facility okay. of Aaron Road. Mm -hmm. we, we have approximately 25 acres there. And I know Fire Drums just bought about 10 of those acres. I know I kind of have an idea of where North is because there's supposed to be a little area and you have a little strip. I'm sorry. South. South. They're okay. south of okay, like 39 Street, uh, where the bus company okay, is, okay. just south of there, that, that industrial oh, the park. Stops, no, that's 147th and Western. Western. God, God help us one day if they should come. If, if Senator O'Malley would do that, that would be a wonderful thing. And it's not far-fetched that it would happen, I can tell you that, but it would be wonderful for the village because with that, everybody would want to build on 147th. It would increase our traffic flow by 25 to 30 percent because we've had traffic studies completed already by Bluestone Development, if that should happen. So it would be significant for our town and it would help everybody, all our tax dollars. Yeah, and, and again, you know, it, you don't want to give excuses or point out, you know, you're talking about what you're, you're you know, undergoing in the open, but, um, you know, that, that interchange improvement was, was, a, was during that four or five year right. construction period, we probably lost two or three projects on, 147th in which you know property was assembled by the village uh just bad i think I mean, that's just bad dr yes. pino i did by chance bring a 25 percent of your government uh -huh. okay so i guess to, to summarize here if, if you had other options to finance this we'd be interested in doing that but that's on a time frame that's five years yes, so three to five years three to five years to, Get the house in order in yep. order to yep. if you had the house yes. in order you probably would have I, I, you I, wouldn't have been here. I don't think we would have been here. We're working diligently this year we will come in under budget. Last year they were a million over, a year before that they were over. Mm -hmm. This year we're right at the pace to come in under and we will. And I and again we're trying to to do better next year to help yeah. us with our funding purpose right. on so, the road. And that's what we're working on back So that, and I think that's why I brought this to the entire board to all over while it's not a school issue it certainly is a community issue and, right. and things that you and your taxpayers who you represent have to make the decision on so i don't want to seem wimpy by saying i'm out but i really believe this is appropriate for you guys to really hash over and, and, and make the the best call as a representing your, your bodies and being a good neighbor to we realize it's a very, very big decision, but we're coming to you because we need your help. And we have a short time frame, a very short time frame. And, and like I said, and, you know, I've known John and we work with you guys. I mean, you could look at the, the wording on that. I mean, we want to be, you know, fair as it relates to recalibrating this thing uh, as other funding sources. Because the idea is, Tiff, you said it, I mean, it is a kind of a last resort thing. We'll be here if we have a different option or all of a sudden the uh, state saying their own problem said that they had $8 million in uh, funding for for the water system. We'd be right there and wouldn't impose on 228. And that's the truth. I had uh, contact with State Representative Will Davis on Sunday evening and I asked if he could make it. And State Representative Davis is here if anybody has any questions about the process. For the SP bill, how it goes through the house and everything. If anybody had a question, he is he's here to answer that. Right. I How much does the water power cost? Combined water improvements, yeah. and it's been it become uh, engineering 101 now. It's it's not just the water tower, the water tower, okay. plus the redundancy on the system and the piping. The Cadillac there is about nine million dollars. I think everything is over here in the and, and then John Robinson still engineering because the these are engineers, they always yeah. put them in tandem. There's about eight million in, in sewer work, but the priority is the water. The priority is the water system. Yeah, the station tank itself is two million. Yeah, yeah, and, and they have three so sites. 
Yeah, some deliver. It's our delivery. Our, our sewage isn't as bad. I mean, we we can we, we double what we have. And I'm working on a grant right now with MWRD from 139th to 142nd in Harrison. That um, I, I think that'll help us because that's a little flood area that we have issues with when it rains heavy. Everything seems to flow there. So we're currently working on a grant with them on that. We just received the permeable paper block grant recently for them. So I, I feel that we're going to have some success with that. I have Robinson Engineering working on the prints on that right now. And that's right there in that TIF district on the north end of town. So that, that'll address that issue? That'll take care of and that. And that's issue. more immediate, that grant? Yes. The grant is more immediate for that particular project? For, for that flooding project. right there. Flooding. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> but that's separate from this water issue that we're here on for the life safety health issue. This is. So it's just this is something we need to immediately address. And I'm sorry it came to me, and because it came to me, I have to bring it to the board. It's, it's that urgent, that important, that <clears throat> dangerous of a level for life, safety, and health. I can't express that enough. So does the board feel comfortable entertaining a vote next Tuesday? I would. So I would ask. Uh, we we'll go back and John will help me with some wording. Uh, we have a proposal here. I'd love to give a copy of that to you to, to look at. And over the course of the next couple of days, if things come to your mind or you have any questions, get those to me right away. We'll make sure we get you all the information that we need to make a informed decision. Like proposal that they just Yeah, I, I would like John to look at it. That'll be part of the packet. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank for you for your time yeah. tonight. I, I know you have it. a lot of things to do. I just came from our board meeting and ran over. State Representative Davis, thank you so much for coming out to see you, sir. Thank you again. All right, thank you. And thank you.